Hello everyone, in this video I will explain to you how I used some motion capture files found on the web. So this is not really how you are supposed to do. By the way, there is a page of instructions uh, on the Blender wiki for this, as well as documentation for the motion capture tools add-on. Uh, but here, this is more a quick method for quick projects. Fast but not clean, but at least it works. And uh, also, I will assume that you already own a rigged model, so I won't rig a, a model for uh, for this tutorial. And so the first step will be to see what a BVH file look like, and there are some links in the description to find some. Let's start by simply importing a BVH and see what it looks like. Import BVH. Yeah. As you can see, it consists in an animated rig, but you can't really use it right now. It's really big and off-centered. So the first thing, we will need to edit it with another free software called BVH Hacker. I will put a link in the description for this one. So here it is. BVH Hacker will allow you to edit the BVH file so that it's easier to use later. Let's close the file in here. So, as we display the file, you can now edit it the way you want. You can select the bones, thanks to this window. You can edit them, thanks to these sliders here, moving or rotate, like this. But, in our case, we will need to center everything. So, first, click on the No Offset button, here. So that now the center is aligned with the master bone, which is here on the hips. Then click on center for you know what. Also you can see here that the animation was recorded at 120 frames per second, which is a little heavy right now. We can clear this up a bit by clicking on the half sample button here. Okay, now it's only 30 frames per second, a much lighter file for later. So we can now save it. Okay, I'm gonna call it tutorial walk. And we can go back into Blender now and load the new file we just created. The difference now is that the rig is perfectly centered even if it's still really big. So I could scale it or rotate it in object mode or fix that earlier when I import it. You can see you have some, op some options here. In my case, I will just set the scale at 0 0.1 and click on Import. And now, as you can see, it will be a little bit clearer for us to work with the rig. And now that we have a friendly BVH file, let's see how I used it. I will open a new scene with my uh, character. So I'll come to the point where you already have a rigged character, whatever the rig look like. This one has a high key constraint, but uh, pretty much any kind of rig will do. Okay, so now if you allow me to, I will just switch the display type. Okay. And I can now import a BVH file into my scene. File, import, BVH. As you can see, it's, it is still a little big. So I will scale it down to fit the size of my character's rig in object mode. So any changes, a scale, or rotation should be done in object mode. Now I will just Move it back a little to see a little better what's going on. Like this. This is where the fun part begins, where we will apply the constraints. Uh, but first, for my rig, I will just deactivate the IK constraint. This will allow me to move the bone freely. It's OK now. We are ready to move on and apply bone constraints. So into the bone constraint panel here, 
add a new one, copy rotation. And now I just need to find the name of the corresponding bone. So here, into pose mode, you can see that this one is called left up leg. So I just need to enter the same information here. Need to find left up leg. Okay. And if I play the animation now, hey, we are moving. So don't mind about the foot, uh, this happens only because of the IK constraint. But if you are a simpler rig, uh, I mean the foot will move as well with uh, the rest of the leg. And now, as you might guess, this is all a matter of uh, adding constraints to each bones. So I will just speed the video while uh, I'm doing this. So right now I'm just adding the same uh, constraint to every other bone. And uh, well, here there's been a little problem since I uh, I failed at entering the correct bone. Also, in order to go a little faster, add the copy rotation constraint to a bone, and now select all the other bones, like this one, this one, this one, this one, not this one. Maybe if it will let me. Okay, press space and find the command copy constraint. Okay, copy. Ah. Copy constraint to selected bones. Okay, so you won't need to add it every time now. So just keep going and uh, just select the right bones for each bones. This is looking pretty encouraging now. The last steps will be for the feet. First, just like any other bone, I will need a copy rotation constraint. The goal is to copy every transformation that occur on the BVH rig. And right now you can see that the feet are acting a little weird. This will need to be corrected. But I will just uh, keep on adding the last constraint, this time a copy location constraint, so the character will move around just like the BVH. So select the hips, as uh, this is the master, and then for each one of the feet, and once again this will be needed only if your rig lo looks like mine, and this is not an obligation. As you can see, although the character is completely alien morphed, the animation works fine. Uh, the reason why this happens is because the hips bones of each rig uh, are not situated at the same height. So I will need to move my character's hips down, really simply, just by clicking uh, on this offset box here, which will allow me to move this bone although this is copying the location movement of the other rig, and so just place it back where it is supposed to be around uh, here I guess. Now about the feet, many things are wrong. The first one is that in my case uh, the legs are not attached uh, to the feet, so I will need to turn back on the IK constraint of the legs, so they will point directly at the feet. Still this is looking uh, a bit silly. I'll just correct uh, I think the position of the hips, as now the legs are too much folded. I think it should be a little more up. Okay. Also, I realized that uh, the hip spawn wasn't that straight up, so I can rotate the hips uh, back as it was, just by clicking the offset box again. I'll keep tweaking things a bit. So it's really up to you to find the correct pose. And uh, concerning the reversed toes, uh, this is due, I guess, to the fact that my bones didn't share the same rotations at first. So I could go through some painful editing or, well, just changing these data here to local space. 
and just do the same for the other one and, and I don't know if you can see it but the animation is reversed as well I will probably need to invert uh, the x-axis just by the, uh, checking this box here it doesn't really feel ok now because I need to correct the angle of the feet select offset again the trick will consist now in finding back um, the correct angle for the feet and I will need to do this uh, for each foot obviously okay, so it doesn't look bad at all uh, I will just need to tweak this a bit and well I could go and tweak this even more but now we have another problem uh, the arms right now it looks uh, a bit silly working like that to correct this I will select the arm and change the type to local space and select offset and now I can rotate the arm a bit so now it will feel uh, a little more natural ok this one as well and uh, now it looks a little better except uh, for the head which is really really weird right now I think I'll do the same so select the head and uh, change to local space offset and I will rotate it like this and this is still uh, a bit weird so I will do the same for the neck local space local space offset rotate ok it's a little better now and we are still some tweaks away from the final stage um, ok so I will move the BVH rig in another layer I think he spreads his leg too much and this is probably because of my IK constraint I could correct this uh, like this moving this bone here ok so well this won't be perfect for now you could tweak this for hours I will stop this right now and show you something cool I can do so the reason why I told you it was a quick way to work with is because you can adapt the animation really quickly let's say I need to change something this is what I can do so I will activate the offset for uh, the location of the feet ok and you will see that now I can create a new animation from this one so uh, I think I will add a keyframe uh, here from this foot as well as here and you can see that the animation keeps playing pretty much naturally I can keep going and create a new action from this and as you can see I can keep changing things like this and yep we have a new animation going on which means that from one animation I can create many copies with many differences animating the, the feet, the arms, the head, etc and that's basically how I did my animation it consisted in uh, copying the animation from the motion capture file and adjusting it the way I wanted and obviously I used many motion capture files like the basketball players etc and uh, this allowed me to create many actions just by changing the rotation of an arm for example etc so I hope it will help you somehow I know this is not the clearest method to work with motion capture but it may help you if you need some random motion capture scenes uh, without uh, something really precise so thank you for watching and uh, well take care of yourself and if you create something using this method well just uh, don't hesitate to share so thank you and uh, goodbye